All right, hey gang, Jason O'Toole here. Wanted to uh, shoot this little video for you. I promised you guys that I would put together uh, a quick little video talking to you a little bit about uh, a concept called following up. So this is the second part of week three in our uh, Drive to Area Director program uh, and our entrepreneurship program. I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about the concept of following up. We talked a little bit about inviting, setting your focus, um, and uh, changing what you focus on, getting rid of negativity. Uh, we talked a little bit about inviting, and now I want to talk to you probably about one of the the most important concepts, which is that of following up. We're going to talk about three different things when it comes to following up. Number one, we're going to talk about follow up in general. Uh, what is it? Uh, we're going to talk about follow up opportunities. And then we're also going to talk about list management so that you know who you're following up with and when you're following up with them. Uh, so number one, fortune is in the follow-up. This is something that I want you guys to all understand. The fortune is in the follow-up. Uh, the majority of your business will come from multiple exposures. I know that a lot of people, uh, they go out, they connect with people, they share a little bit of information, they invite them to an event, uh, or they invite them to uh, some sort of presentation, or you share a video with them, uh, and then if they decide that they don't want to uh, buy anything or jump on board with you, uh, you tend to get a little bit discouraged, and uh, you know, a lot of people at that point in time, that's really when they quit. Uh, is at that point in time when they get those no's, they get those rejections, and in sales, I want you to know that it's really not about the initial contact. It's about the following up the process therein. And then as well, giving you the ability to leverage each of the opportunities that you have uh, to be able to go out and further close that deal. Um, one of the things that I learned at a very young age was that 48% of sales never follow, 48% of salespeople never follow up with a prospect or a connection or a contact. 25% uh, of salespeople uh, make a second contact uh, and then they stop. And 12% uh, go on and make three contacts and 10% go on to make three connections or contacts, uh, uh, three connections <clears throat> total. However, here's the cool data behind it. Here's the cool data behind it. Uh, and this will give you a little bit of a, a good feeling, I'm sure. Uh, only 2% of sales are made on the first contact. Okay, So if you're feeling bad and feeling guilty that you connect with 100 people but you never followed up with them and you only got uh, five orders, well, congratulations, you're way above average because really you should have only got two out of 100 uh, if you never followed up with those individuals. So 3% of the sales are made on the second contact and 5% are made on the third contact, 10% are made on the fourth contact. And here's the really cool part is that 80% of everything that we do in connection and contact with people, that's really where the sale comes from. So I want you guys to keep in mind that when you go and connect with an initial uh, in individual individual or a business and they say no on the first time, I want you to understand that really only two out of a hundred are actually ever going to say yes on the first connection or the first contact. Uh, and it's actually 80% are made, uh, sales are made on the fifth to the twelfth contact and the twelfth connection. Uh, what that means is that you got to have a great follow-up system. Uh, you got to make sure that you're managing your connections, your contacts properly. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that on the third uh, topic that we're going to talk about here with respect to follow-up. We're going to teach you how to be able to manage that process and uh, make sure that you're following up with people consistently and constantly. So follow up is very simple. Guys, your job is to move people through the funnel in order to be able to get closure. Uh, if it's a yes or if it's a no, it really doesn't matter. Your job is to get those individuals off your list. I always like to say I'll never force you to join, I'll never force you to buy, but I will force you to make a decision. And uh, one of my favorite things to say when I follow up with people is, hey, I need to get you off my list. So do you want to get started or do you not want to get started? Either way, make a decision. I'm okay with whatever you decide to do. Uh, a no for me uh, means no, not right now. A lot a lot of people take a no very uh, serious and they take it as personal rejection. It has nothing to do with you and everything to do with the individuals that you're connecting with. Um, you know, you take the analogy of, of going out for uh, uh, pick a pick a movie out with your significant other and uh, you go and you pick a movie out and she says, no, I don't want to see that. You don't go home and cry over that, do you? You just pick, up a, pick out another movie. You don't take it personal. Uh, you don't uh, break up with her or break up with him uh, or get mad and not talk to them for a week. Uh, essentially, you understand that, well, maybe they don't want to watch that movie at that particular point in time. You don't take it personal. Yeah, when you go and connect with people with uh, with our products, uh, sometimes if you get a no and you get rejected, you take it personally uh, and you say decide that uh, this isn't for you or you can't do this. Uh, when in reality, if you understood the data and you understood the numbers, it's not supposed to happen that quick and it's not supposed to happen that easy. Uh, it is consistent and constant effort. So a no for now, uh, no means no for now. And you can ask your prospect that as well. Uh, if they say no, then you can ask the question, is that no for now or is that no forever? And if the chances are they'll say no for now. And then what you do is you ask them if permission to be able to follow up with them maybe in a month or if anything else exciting happens, any new product launches or anything new uh, that's, that's noteworthy, uh, do you mind if I follow up with you and give you a call and keep you posted? <clears throat> 
So if they say no, uh, be clear uh, on what your prospect is saying no to uh, as well. Um, are they saying, I, I can't do the call at that time, or I can't look at the website, uh, or I can't watch the presentation right now? Or are they saying, I'm not interested in doing anything what you're doing? Or is it just simply no for now? So if you qualify that no into those three categories or those, those three uh, uh, pillars, then you'll get a much better understanding if you're looking for, uh, you'll get a much better, better understanding of what it is that they're actually saying to you. Because communication, a lot of times, uh, falls between the cracks especially when it comes to a buying process. So uh, if you're, you're not looking to close anyone, I want you to keep that in your mind as well, guys. The, the whole concept of closing, you're looking for closure. <clears throat> it's not about closing. It's about getting closure. One way or the other, you're going to either add them into your funnel and follow up later. You're going to get them started on the products and or in the business, or you're going to set them into your crock pot, which we'll talk a little bit later, uh, which is basically where you can consistently and constantly follow up with people. I've got people I've been following up with for years, guys. Uh, seven years right now is the record for one person that I've been following up with. Um, so I want you to... Uh, know that it's consistent and constant effort uh, that will close the deal and, and you will get 100% of the people that you try to as long as you have a follow-up process that works for you works for your life and uh, will allow you to be able to build consistently and constantly uh, by following up properly um, continue managing your prospects uh, continue managing where your prospects are in the funnel process. Uh, you can't remember where everyone is at. So you've got to use the field notes in your prospector. Uh, you've got to use your tip tracker. Uh, you've got to have some sort of prospect manager to be able to do that. Uh, myself, I started using prospector now. However, I used to use uh, an Excel spreadsheet and I literally have thousands of connections and contacts where I met them, what they've been through, what information they've seen, and what information they haven't seen. If they've done a three-way call, uh, who, who they did the three-way call with, what the result was, when the follow-up meeting is that then goes into my calendar. So there's a whole system that you need to have uh, for your entire follow-up process. So focus on your funnel and moving people through the funnel. You start with your list, then you use a tool, you invite, you present. You start with your list, you use a tool, give them a tool, you invite them to something, and then you present them the information, and then the follow-up starts all the way back up at the end of the top. Okay, so if you imagine uh, uh, an arrow starts here, list, the arrow goes down here to tip, the arrow goes down here to follow-up, and then in tip is tool, invite, and present, and then it goes back up and it starts all over in your list. So that's the concept of following up. I hope that you understand and, and you get a good feeling. The point of this section, guys, is, is mainly for you to understand that uh, if you talk to somebody once or twice and they say no, number one, get closure on what that no is. Is it no for now? Is it no that you can't do the call? Is it no that you can't watch the video? Is it no that you can't try the product? Um, or is it no forever? And, and if you categorize that, then it's going to give you the ability to follow up with that individual. And that's really what um, the key is in closing, in my opinion. Closing to me, it doesn't necessarily mean closing into the business or closing into the products. Closing to me means closing to the next step. So every single conversation I have with the prospect, I'm always closing. But I'm not necessarily always looking to close to sign the deal. If I close for them to watch a website or to come to an event or to, to jump on a three-way call or to simply try the products or to watch a testimonial video online, I'm always closing to something on every single call with a prospect. But the most important part of the call is that booking of the next call. That is the close. The close is either um, getting them to take the product to join the business or booking them to look at some other information, i.e. getting another exposure and always keeping in mind that you're going to have to go 5 to 12 exposures. So always asking them to get into the business or buy the product and then if that doesn't happen, then from there you're going to want to close them to another exposure. And then your goal is to get to 5 to 12 exposures because that is where 80% of all sales come from, period, end of question, end of story. If you get a close on the first deal, congratulations, you are an anomaly. Uh, you're not going to build an organization, a team that's going to be able to do the same. So it's important that you understand it. First, feel good about it and understand that it's not a rejection. Do not take personal uh, responsibility to it. It has nothing to do with you whatsoever. A lot like the movie, uh, your job is to just simply give them exposures, give them exposures and get their commitment and their buy-in and closure to a follow-up call and to get an exposure in the middle. So talk to them, get an exposure, have a follow-up call. The success of every single phone call comes down to you scheduling and booking a follow-up uh, uh, meeting. In person, on the phone, Zoom, it doesn't matter, okay? Let's talk a little bit about follow-up opportunities. So when do you have an opportunity to be able to follow up? So you meet a, meet a, meet a prospect, uh, you go and you connect with them, you invite them somewhere, you get an exposure. Um, when is a good time to be able to follow up and what opportunities do you have to be able to follow up? For those of you that are taking notes, I want you to write down these three things. So here's three great ways for you to have a follow-up opportunity, three primary follow-up opportunities, if you will. Number one is after sending a tool, whatever your favorite tools are. Number two is after you send them to a party. So I always like to go to tool, party, and then post party. 
So those are my three follow-up opportunities. So I like to get, connect with them after sending a tool, book a follow-up time. So I would say, hey, I'm going to send you this video. When do you think you'll have 30 minutes to be able to watch it? When they pick a time, then say, great, listen, I'm going to put you in my calendar right now. I'm going to follow up with you 30 minutes after you watch that video. I'm going to put you in my calendar. I'll be right there to answer any questions for you. And hey, you know what? If it's not for you, that's okay too. But at least do me uh, the uh, the honor of, uh, or at least do me the respect of jumping on the call afterwards so that you I can get your feedback. Even if you don't want to do it, I would love to get your feedback and opinion. And that just makes them feel like, hey, if they get on the phone with you, it's not because you want to try to hard close them again if they're not in the business. If you make them feel like you're going to hard close them on the next call, they're not going to show up. So if you say something like that, hey, do me the respect, show, show up for the call, even if it's not for you, you're probably going to have questions. But even if it's not for you, hey, that's okay. I'm going to, I'm going to um, answer some questions for you and uh, I'd love to get your feedback on it. And then after that is after you invite them to a party and then after they attend the party. Following up is basically how you keep your prospects moving through the funnel. Uh, they're either going to uh, they're either going through the funnel, uh, the funnel, or they've said no. That's it. One or two. Um, the goal of your funnel is yes, promoter or customer. No, closure through your funnel. So you want to, if they say yes, they're going to be a promoter or customer. If they say no, they're going to go back up to the top and then they're going to get added to your list. You're going to do tool, invite, present again, and you're going to keep doing, following that process until you get uh, a significant answer from them or one that you're looking for. You'll always get a yes eventually in the end, guys. Don't worry. Um, send a tool, but no response. Here's option number one. Uh, hi, Steve. Just wanted to touch base with you and see if you got the information I sent you. Uh, and before I move on to other people, I wanted to make sure uh, that I followed up with you and give you one more chance to take a look. So that's something what I would say to an individual um, that uh, you sent a tool to and they didn't get any response after that. So it sounds something like this again. Hey, Frank, I uh, just wanted to touch base with you and see you got the information that I sent you. I sent it via email. And uh, before I moved on to a handful of other people that I wanted to connect with, but first I wanted to connect with you first, I just wanted to make sure that I followed up with you to give you one more opportunity to take a look at it. Uh, that's something that I would say to somebody um, that didn't respond. If I invited to a party and they didn't show up, I would say something like, uh, hey, Steve, just realized that you weren't able to make it to my, my party there on uh, Saturday, uh, and I wanted just to reach out to you and uh, say that you didn't miss out. Uh, how about we get together over a coffee? Don't worry about it, and I'll run the information by you. I'll even bring a little bit of a, a product for you to be able to try. Don't make, don't make people feel bad. Don't make people feel stupid. Um, you know, A lot of times, I'll call as well if they don't show up, and I would say, hey, Steve, listen, brother, I know that you said you were going to be here. Uh, I'm extremely worried about you. Um, you know, I, you're not a guy that uh, doesn't, doesn't do what he says he that, that that does what he says he's going to do. And when he didn't show up to the party, I figure something happened. Can you please give me a call back and let me know that you're okay? Uh, that's something that I uh, say that works really well uh, as well. Uh, if you feel that someone's avoiding you, um, this is another objection that people get when you're following up. Um, I, I just simply call it right out. I'm like, hey, Steve, feels like you're avoiding me, brother. I hope that's not the case. Uh, but I wanted to hear, um, I, wanted you to, I wanted you to hear my heart. And my heart is this. I'm passionate about feeding families uh, in need with this mission and the cause. And I promised myself I would follow up with everyone. They showed a little bit of interest. And uh, you expressed interest. So uh, I'm just doing you a favor. I wanted to give you a call. And uh, now if you've changed your position or you've changed your mind, you're no longer interested in doing this, then I'll, I just need you to let me know. We're friends. We've been connected for a long time. Just let me know. I, I don't care either way. Uh, just let me know so I don't feel like uh, you're avoiding me or I don't feel like uh, I'm hassling you. Um, if they come to a party and you can't close them. Uh, this is the third one. Uh, this is the third big one. So I'm going through the three biggest objections that people will, that, that you'll get. Uh, if they come to a party but they didn't close, uh, say, hey, Steve, um, it was great to see you last night. Uh, it was great to connect with you, and I know I didn't really get a chance to talk that much, uh, so I wanted to be sure you didn't miss out on uh, on the party or on the event or on uh, on on the product sampling. I hope you don't feel like I'm bugging you, but I just don't don't want I just didn't want you to think that I'm not following up. So I always put it back on them that I'm doing something in as for, uh, as a favor for them. So. I hope that this works for you guys a little bit. I hope you get a good understanding of, of what this process looks like, how to be able to handle some of the most common objections uh, and common challenges that you're going to have in putting people through the system and following up. Now, when it comes to funnel, funnel management, uh, as people come out of the bottom, you got to be adding people into the top. The most common mistake that people will make is they'll make a list of 50 or they'll make a list of 100 and they think that that's all they need to do. Guys, I made a list of 100 people, uh, 200 people. I connected with the first 100 and then by the time I got through those first 100, uh, I, started, I went to the bottom two, 100. Um, I didn't even come back to that first hunter because as I'm out networking and meeting people, I kept adding people to the top constantly, constantly, constantly. My biggest challenge is actually following up uh, because I'm always adding so many people to the top that you know one out of 20 or 30 just automatically join. So I don't even bother following up with the other 29. That's not a good thing. It's a terrible thing. It's something that I need to work on because of the 20. So I'm actually looking for the one, the two out of 100 that actually join uh, because I network so much and I'm adding 10, 15 people a day through the funnel. So I grab the one out of 100 because I'm too lazy to follow up. How 
However, when I first started in the business, um, I, I, I was I was relentless, and I'm still relentless with a handful of people. For example, the guy that I've been following up for seven years. I just want to I just want to um, uh, do that for the story, but uh, it's quite funny. Uh, before following up. Uh, know what step you're moving them towards. So always know what the conference. This is why you need prospector. This is why you need to be making lists and making and taking information in there. Um, and so you need to be making sure that you're um, uh, working through your list, and you need to be diligent about managing that process. Um, you got to know what you've done with them before, so that you can talk about that when you follow up with them. Because remember, you're going to be following up with dozens of people, uh, but for them, it's um, it's it's a little bit different. Um, just one second. Uh, for them, it's a little bit different. Um, you learn a little bit about safety and numbers. I think it was in week two. Um, we talked a little bit about safety and numbers. And if you're feeling desperate, um, it's, it's, it's for one reason and one reason only. I've been saying this for almost seven to eight years now. Um, the only reason that you feel desperate in your business, if you feel desperate, is because you have um, you don't have enough people. You're not networking enough. If you had a list of 1,000 people and somebody told you no, would you care? If you had a list of 10 people and somebody told you no, would you care? If you had a list of three people and somebody told you no, would you care? And if you only had one person to talk to and they told you no, would you care? As the number goes up and as you keep filling that funnel, you get so unattached from the individual that says no. I, you, you talk to people that are filling their funnel all the time, adding three a day, 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 three a day. Three a day. They don't remember the no's. I don't remember the no's. I don't remember who said no yesterday because I met five new people today. So it's constantly rotating, guys. And if you if, if you keep f filling that funnel, um, then you have nothing to pro nothing to worry about. Uh, if you're stuck anywhere in the funnel, any place, any time, your go to is a three way call. Your go to is always a three way call to move them to the next step. So I'll use one of my upline. Uh, or one of my downlines. Sorry, I don't have an upline. Uh, one of my uh, one of my one of my downline to use um, um, to be able to use them as a three-way call, and I promote them as an expert. Hey, this is Brenda. Hey, this is John. Hey, this is Sam. Uh, hey, this is Chris. This is Andrew, and and, and they're they're a shareholder, and they they've made you know forty thousand dollars with the company. They've made a million dollars with the company. They've made five hundred dollars with the company. Whatever it is, and all they're going to do is I'm going to say Steve. I'm going to say John. Listen, I need you to get this person to go and watch the video. I've sent it to him three times. You won't go and find a video. So I need you on the call right now, and I need you to get in the video. John's going to jump on the line and say, hey, listen, I, my name's John. I, uh, you know, Jay tried to get me to watch that video as well. Took me probably a couple weeks to be able to watch it as well. But listen, I'm going to tell you this, man. It's the best decision that I ever made in my life. I went and took 30 minutes to look at the video. I went and checked it out. I tried the product. I made a million dollars. It was the best. Uh, I, I thank Jason every day for uh, chasing me down, hassling me down, and following up 15, 20 times to get me to watch that stupid video. But I promise you, uh, it's going to be worth 30 minutes of your life. So, um, you know, why don't you watch that video? I love the jump. On the back on the phone with Jay and answer any questions you got. Can I count on you to do that? That's what John's going to say. And now it's coming from John. Now they're going to go and do it. it. It's very simple. It's very easy, but it works very effectively. People will do something for a stranger before they will for a friend or believe them for that matter. Um, if you're stuck anywhere, like I said, guys, use a three-way call. Um, the, the biggest thing to remember when it comes to funneling um, in, in managing your process is this. Don't get frustrated. Persistency is everything. Tenacity is everything. It's the only reason um, why I've managed to hit Global Ambassador. The only reason why I've made the money that I've made uh, is because I'm extremely, extremely persistent. You cannot fail in this business. You cannot fail in this business unless you quit. That is it. You've got to uh, have a strong tenacity uh, with absolute persistence. And you just got to keep going at your prospects like that as well. But just be elegant about it. Don't be that annoying person that keeps saying, you want to buy, do you want to buy, do you want to buy. It's, hey, following up with you at six o'clock. Steve, you asked me to give you a call and follow up. Is anything exciting happening in the business? Well, listen, I just had a friend of mine qualify for a BMW. I wanted to introduce you to it. It's pretty exciting. Hey, we just launched this new product. Hey, we just launched this new video. Hey, I just found this online and I thought of you. Any reason to be able to follow up at the time that you say that you're going to follow up is critical and it's key. You've got to create the action step right now, guys, of making three connections a day, three prospects a day. Third week in the business, you need 63 total prospects in the business by week three. Connect three-way calls every single opportunity that you have uh, and leverage, leverage, leverage those three-way calls, guys. It's the number one masterful resource that you can learn uh, right here uh, in this business. So I hope that, that helps. You got a lot of action steps here, guys, for uh, for the last week, and um, you, um, yeah, you'll get all those through the individual that put you on the call or in the thread that we've created for all of you guys. Uh, but I hope that you've learned something here on following up. It's critical, it's crucial, uh, and it's the number one thing that you want to really get great at is managing that list. They always say one thing in marketing, and that is the money is in the list, and that is whether it is in your phone or whether it is in um, your. Um, 
whether it's in your phone or whether it's on the computer. I want to show you guys something. This is not like an imported genealogy. This is not like a, uh, some tool or resource or purchase list. I want to show you guys. This is through raw just getting out there over the years. And I want to see, I want you guys to see where you're going to be at after doing this. I've been doing this a long time. I've been doing this for 10 years. Um, but I learned what you're learning right now um, 10 years ago. So I've been doing this three a day concept for a very long time until I went full time. And then I bumped it up to about 10 a day, 20 a day. I, want to, I don't know if you can see this or not. Uh, I'm going to try to zoom this in for you here. See if you can make this out. Come on. Ah, oh, too much light. Oh, well. See if I can turn this down. I want you guys to, I want to give you guys a glimpse of um, where you'll be at in a handful of years and why when somebody tells me no, it doesn't matter. I can't believe you can't see that at all. There we go. What does that say? See that bottom number? It's backwards, but I want you to read that. It says 18,000. 100, 18,100. Do you know what that is for 18,100? That is, wow, so difficult. Um, those are the contacts in my phone, 18,100 contacts that know me and that recognize me and that if I reach out to them, they would say, hey, that is what it takes, guys. Uh, that's not what it takes, sorry. That's what it takes to make a million dollars a year consistently for seven years. Uh, yes, that's what it takes. Uh, however, if you want to make an extra 3,000 a month, 5,000 a month, that's not what it takes. That is, a, that is an extreme example. That is where you will be 10 years from now if you keep down the path of doing three a day, getting great at the invitation process, great at funnel management. That is where you will be 10 years from now. And then I want you to ask yourself this, 10 years from now when you've built a great income, you earn six figures a year, let's say in the next three to five years, 10 years from now, do you think um, it's going to be difficult for you to go and build a business? Um, let's say you want to add an extra 10,000 a month. How hard is that going to be to reach through 18,000 contacts to go and find 20 people that want to partner with you on the next run that you're doing uh, when you do what I'm doing, which is always every three years you want to rebuild. You want to run and rebuild. You want to run and rebuild. You want to add another zero to your income. Uh, you want to increase. You want to go and help. You want to give back. You want to send the elevator back down to the bottom to help the newest person. Anytime you want to inspire people, you just got to get back in the field and go and do the things that you're inspecting others to do and you will absolutely kick butt and take names. I love you guys. I uh, can't wait to see you on the next class and on the next course and uh, we'll talk to you again real soon. Make sure you connect with me on Facebook, uh, Jason O'Toole, uh, over on Instagram, uh, which is meet Jason O'Toole, Twitter, Jason underscore O'Toole, or at my blog, www.jasonotooleonline.com. Talk to you guys soon. Bye now.